Hi everybody, so today we're going to look at some exam practice for six mark questions and specifically looking at tectonics. We're going to look at the mark schemes for the exam and what the examiner is going to be looking for in your six mark questions. So the first question we are going to focus on is using figures one and two suggest why both volcanoes and earthquakes occur in Iceland and that's a six mark question. So as with all exam questions the first thing you need to always do is bug the question. So in case you've forgotten the B stands for box the command word and this command word for this exam question is suggest. The U means to underline the key and important information you need for your answer. So for us, figures one and two, both volcanoes and earthquakes, Iceland, and also the six marks. So you need to make sure you're really confident with your command words and what your command words mean. So the command words suggest basically is asking you to explain how or why something has occurred. Um, so it's, it's very much, it's very similar to an explain command word. Now check the things that you have underlined. So both volcanoes and earthquakes, we must use both in our answers. We can't just use volcanoes or earthquakes. They would say, or if that was the case. We also need to make sure that we are focusing on figures one and on figures two. We need to use both again and we are talking about Iceland specifically. As it's a six mark question, we should try and aim to spend six minutes on the question. So that's one minute per mark. And you need to use your PEE -E paragraphs for a six mark question. You don't necessarily need to do the link like you would for a nine marker. The key thing that you include is the point, the evidence and explaining. You need to make sure you are writing three clear paragraphs and it's good to do a very quick plan as well to ensure that you have a good structure before you get started. Six mark questions are level marked in geography. So you can see the table here. So level three, which is detailed, will get you either five or six marks out of six. Level two, which is clear, will get you three to four marks out of six a one which is basic, one to two marks out of six, and zero, zero marks out of the six available marks. The way the examiner level marks is that they won't give you specific points or marks per specific point that you make. The examiner will read the answer as a whole and then they will decide where you fit in that table. The examiner will be looking for developed and explained points, so this is where we need to make sure that we are doing the three extended PEE -E paragraphs for maximum marks. And for any six or nine mark questions, it is essential that you use evidence and examples in a structured way. So that's to say any data, any case study facts and figures, any named places, named examples are important. This is where your point, evidence, explain paragraphs are great so that you can structure it in a way that evidence has to fit into your answer. The link is not necessarily essential. This is more useful in your nine mark questions when they are asking you to evaluate. But you might find it good if it helps you to keep to the question and keep yourself structured. Finally, if they ask you to use the figure, you have to use that figure. This could be a graph, this could be a photograph, it might be a map, it could be any range of information. But you must use it if they have asked you to. So let's break down the level marking mark scheme. So first of all, our zero marks or level zero, that just means there's no relevant content. This is quite difficult to get if you have written something relevant to the question. Um, so unless you didn't answer the question or your answer is not relevant to the question. So for example, if you talked about how the volcanoes in Iceland brought in a huge amount of tourists every year, that wouldn't be answering the question, therefore no relevant content. So to be awarded a level one or a basic answer, which is one to two marks out of six, you will have made very simple statements or have a very limited answer. You may not have used any named places or examples and there are few or no key terms in your answer. 
For the level one, you also have little or no explanation. So if an examiner reads your answer and it's very basic, no evidence, only simple statements and a very simple description, you will only get one to two marks. To reach a level two or a clear answer, so that's three or four marks out of six, you will start to be explaining fairly clearly. You'll be using linked statements and explaining briefly for a clear answer. You also have examples, um, but there may be little detail or no specific facts or figures, and it will be potentially a bit vague, and you may have used some key terms. So finally is your most detailed answer. So five or six marks out of six, this is level three. And in order to reach this level, you need to make sure you have detailed and well-developed points. You need to have explained these very clearly and in a complete sequence. This just means step by step. So one fact following another in a logical way. You will have used detailed examples, case studies, facts, figures, key examples that will back up your points specific to the question. And you will have included a good range of geographical key terms. In a six marker that is requiring you to use a figure, it is important you use that figure or you'll be capped at a basic level, so level one. And you can't get more than two marks out of six. The question is asking you to suggest reasons why both volcanoes and earthquakes occur. So if you only talk about one or the other, you will be capped at a level two. So the maximum marks you'll be able to get out of six is four. The question has clearly stated that you need to include both. You have your six mark question that has been boxed, underlined and you will have gone back and read through that one more time. It is a six mark question and you can see there on the left hand side you have figures one and figure two for you to refer to as part of this question. When you've been given figures I would highly recommend that you go and annotate those figures before answering your question. And it's quite a good way of having a checklist to work through as you answer the six or the nine mark question asking you to use the figure. I've noticed that they've given us a distribution and that there are eight volcanoes and 11 earthquakes on the map in figure one. Next, I've taken a look at figure two and I can see on figure two that they are showing us the mantle, which is beneath the Earth's crust. Um, they've given us the plate names as well as in figure one, North American and Eurasian plate. And just from my general knowledge, I want to use key terms like convection currents in my answer too. So I'm just jotting this down to remind myself to do this. In figure one, I can see that the plate margins are moving away from each other. So this is a constructive plate margin. So I'm quickly writing this down just so that I can make sure I include this as well into my answer. And finally, I know that the types of volcanoes that occur at constructive plate margins are called shield volcanoes, which is what we looked at in the previous video. So I've just jotted this down in figure two where we can see this and they've shown us that there is a volcano and it's quite a low flat shield volcano. I'm not going to be writing this exam question out in full, but what I will do is do a very in-depth detailed plan so you can see how you may want to structure your exam answer. In your exam, I wouldn't recommend spending too long on your plan. Keep it very brief, very quick, so that you can get on to writing and making the most of those minutes and the mark per minute. So our first paragraph, we're going to focus on earthquakes. And our point is going to be that earthquakes form or occur due to the movement of our tectonic plates. Our evidence is using figure one. It shows that plates are moving apart. These are constructive and there are 11 earthquakes occurring where the margin is or near that margin in Iceland. And you can tick those off once you have um, written those down, just to make sure that you are on track of everything you wanted to include, as it is essential that we use evidence from those figures. And then finally, we need to explain our point clearly and logically. So we want to say why the earthquake is occurring using all of that previous knowledge from the previous vid video, using this is because, and this means that. So explaining clearly what those processes are, why they occur, and don't forget to include all of those key terms that you've learned previously. 
In paragraph two, we're going to focus on volcanoes, and our point is going to be that volcanoes occur at constructive plate margins because the magma can escape between those margins. We have to use evidence, so the evidence we're going to use is about figure two. So figure two shows how the mantle and the magma is escaping between those two plates, and we're going to name those plates, the North American plate and the Eurasian plate, to show that we have used those two figures. We then need to explain using this is because and this means that and you have to include your key terms there also. So don't forget to bring in as much knowledge as possible from the previous video about why we have volcanoes occurring at that plate margin. You may also want to talk about the general plate tectonics theory, about why those plates are moving apart as well, just to expand on your answer. And finally, we want to include a final paragraph with just that extra bit of knowledge. So in this case, we're going to mention our shield volcanoes and how they form. So we're again using figure two, showing how there is a low and flat volcano. Uh, we can feed in a bit of figure one as well. So figure one shows that there are eight volcanoes along the plate margin in Iceland. And then we're going to explain why that's the case. So because there is very hot and fluid magma escaping, this means that it can flow a long way before it cools and this forms a low and flat shield volcano. So this is an overview of how you could have structured your six mark question. And it's really good once you've finished, you can just go through and just check to see that you've done everything. So have you talked about figures one and figure two? Yes, you have. Have you included volcanoes and earthquakes? Go through, check, have you got those two words? Yes, you have. It's always good just to scan through, just to make sure and double check that you have done everything the question has asked you to do. And remember, it's your exam answer, so you can choose the points that you feel the most confident with um, to explain and to provide evidence for. Mine is just a suggestion. So now it is your turn to try a six marker for yourself. It is not going to be including figures this time, it's a bit more simple and straightforward, um, but is a very realistic six mark question that you might get in an exam. So the question is, explain why volcanoes and earthquakes occur at destructive plate boundaries, and that's six mark question. You might get a similar one that asks you to also look at a figure. Again, for that, you would do all the things we did previously, making sure you annotate the figure, etc. But for this one, it's just quite straightforward. So remember, box the command word. So explain, give reasons. This is because this means that. Underline the key things that you need to include, volcanoes and earthquakes and destructive plate boundaries. Do not talk about any other plate boundaries, only destructive and finally go back and read the question just to make sure that you have picked out that key information correctly. So as previously mentioned, you should be spending six minutes on this question. You should be doing PEE -E paragraphs. You can do the link if you want to, but it's not necessary. You must have three paragraphs. You need to make sure you've included this is because and this means that or other explanation terms. Using examples to reach that level three. So your name places, data, key facts, figures, and don't forget your key terms. There are plenty that you can include about destructive plate boundaries, so make the most of it. So you should spend six minutes trying to write out an answer to this six mark question. Now, this only gives you two minutes per paragraph, which doesn't sound like a lot of time. So you need to make sure that your points and your explanations are very concise and to the point and making sure they answer the question simply. If you feel that you're running out of time and you've got to the end of the six minutes and you have more you would like to say or add, then put a little line or a little star or use a different colour to finish off your exam question. As you do more and more practice of these six markers, you'll find that you get quicker and more concise and it will be much easier to fit it all in within the six minutes. That will come with lots of practice, but also with having all of that subject knowledge and content and key terms in your long-term memory ready to go for the answers. So pause the video here and try to write out your six mark answer. Once you've written your six mark answer out, you're gonna self assess yourself. Read through your answer and annotate in the margin where you have done the following. So if P for point, EV for evidence, EX where you have explained using this is because or this means that, NP for any named places you have given as examples, Key KT for key terms, where are your key terms, have you included three paragraphs, and did you talk about volcanoes and earthquakes? 
and then decide which level you would fall into. Is it basic, is it clear, or is it a detailed answer? And award yourself a mark out of six.